Uh, session two will be a, a discussion on climate change and environmental stewardship. Luckily, we have some very reputed academics amongst us who has been who have been working in the field of ecology for years. But the first, I would like to call Deputy Director Kaja from the Right to Livelihood Award. We feel lucky um, that Kaja took her time uh, out her busy schedule and came here to attend this event today. Thank you so much, Kaja. Thank you so much. Um, I would first like to express my and the, the Right Livelihood Foundation's deepest condolences to Vimla Pradet Paritima Bauguna and the whole family. Greetings to Sri Vimla Bauguna. Please convey to her that the vision she shared with her husband will be carried into the future by so many. It's a great honor for me to be here with all of you today. And I have been so much enjoying to hear the various stories about Shri Sundarlar. I met um, two heroes from my youth, Vimla and Sundarlal in Bonn 2010 for the 40th anniversary of the Right Livelihood Award. And I will show you uh, a somewhat maybe a unexpected picture of them both. Um, photographs taken then in Bonn for a photo exhibition meant to provoke and asking who are really the important leaders in our world today. In the acceptance speech from 1987, when Chipko received the Right Livelihood Award in Stockholm, Sri Sundarlal expressed joy of receiving an award, which he described as intended for projects which are cornerstones of a new world which we can enjoy living in. And that is head on what Right Livelihood is all about. Looking at books in my bookshelf from the 1980s when the Right Livelihood Award was initiated, it strikes me how little we have accomplished when it comes to unsustainable consumption patterns, the unfair distribution of resources, et cetera, et cetera. In a year's time, 50 years after the Stockholm Environmental Conference in 1972, our government in Sweden intends to invite the world once again. And the space is still not mainly created for people in movements like Chipko, who could lead us, who could really lead us towards real change. In his acceptance speech, Sri Sundarlal also brought up the Indian author Tagore, who received the Nobel Prize in Literature 74 years earlier in Stockholm. Tagore, who also reminded the world of the lost connection to Aranya or forest culture, where forests provided the teachers of society with visions for a simple life in connection with all living beings. We think we are so connected by our constant presence on the internet. We now need to reconnect to the wood wide web. In an old house from the 1700s, right next to the big university, Uppsala University Library in Sweden, there was during the 1980s, when I was a young student, a big metal cabinet full of hundreds and hundreds of small pieces of paper cards, that time's database, and that they were contacts to an amazing global network of people and organizations working for another development where justice and living in harmony with nature was central. Contacts to the Chipko movement was of course on one of the cards as were Meda Patkar, Baba Amte, Vandana Shiva and so on. Up until then, a disillusioned young student with a feeling that nobody understood what was wrong with the world. This became my gold mine and made me realize the importance of connections between all these islands of hope. And that uh, just that 
would be my mission in life. Today, it's up to all of us to show young activists, not least the climate activists, just as uh, Sundarlal and Vimla has always done, that they are not alone in trying to mend our relationship with nature. And we need to march side by side with the youth. Sri Sundarlal's voice will continue to be in our heads and our hearts and will continue to work its ways through powerful corridors. I feel so privileged to have met Sri Sundarlal and Sri Vimla Bauguna and learned from their work and thinking. And you can rest mm -hmm. assured that right livelihood, a courage powered community for social change will keep on honoring the wisdom of the Chipko movement and its leaders and make sure that a new generation of activists will be inspired by their vision. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kaza. It was a pleasure to have you here today, especially on such a short notice. So generous of you. And as you said, I think it's time for us to connect to worldwide wood rather than worldwide wood and very important, especially for the youth. And I hope you can Sorry for that. Up next, I would like to invite Dr. John and Mrs. Linda. Dr. John and Linda, both of them have been the sweetest person I've ever met here in Melbourne, um, especially since um, I'm in a different country, knowing um, that a global pandemic is on and I do not, I cannot return back home. It has been, um, I, fe I found myself very lucky to have met these people, apart from being great environmentalists, um, which they'll sh uh, surely talk about in a few minutes. Um, they're actually very good human beings as well as they made sure that an international student from a different country is taken equally good care of. Um, here when she's away from her family. Thank you so much, Joan and Linda. Can I have you? Thank you, Haritima. Uh, my name is Linda Parlane and this is my husband, John Stone. We'd like to begin by acknowledging that we're speaking to you tonight from the land of the traditional owners of the, sorry, the traditional owners of the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. We acknowledge that their sovereignty was never ceded. This always was and always will be Aboriginal land. We'd also like to thank the Bahugana family for so generously inviting us to be part of this wonderful tribute to Sri Sandalal Bahugana. Our hearts go out to you as you, as you grieve the loss of so great a spirit. I had the great privilege to meet his wonderful granddaughter Haritima as one of my students at the University of Melbourne. And I was astonished and delighted to learn of her family connection to the Chipko movement. Because 40 years ago, as young environmental activists here in Australia, both Linda and I were inspired by the Chipko movement. Their commitment and bravery were an, Im an important inspiration for us and, and others in many Australian environmental actions. Haritima, if you could show the first image, please. Sure. Perhaps the best example from Australia of this um, inspiration is in Tasmania in the campaign to save the world heritage Franklin and Gordon rivers and their ancient forests from a proposed hydroelectricity dam, which Haritim is going to show you a photo of this place in just a moment. Can you see my screen? Coming. Coming. Yeah. So this is the Lower Gordon River. As well as massful, massive peaceful protests, and when you're ready, Haritima, we can move to the second image as well, as well as massive peaceful protests in cities and towns all across Australia. 
in, in the summer of 1982 and 1983, many thousands of people took nonviolent action at the very remote dam site on the Lower Gordon River. Are we having the second image coming perhaps? So just one second. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, screen. yeah. I'm sorry, I think my network. Oh. Oh, perhaps we, oh, well, it doesn't matter. Um, As organisers and nonviolent action trainers, John and I were just two of the 1,300 people who were arrested uh, at the dam site on the river. And John was just one of the 450 people who were jailed. By the winter in 1983, Australians had voted in a government committed to stopping the dam. The senseless destruction ceased and the rivers and forests remain protected today. Our continuing stewardship of these ancient Tasmanian rainforests is vital today in our shared struggle against global heating. We are very sad to have never met Sri Sundalal, but even so, there is no doubt that both he and Vimla have had a powerful influence on our lives in our beloved country. They may not have been aware of their powerful reach into such a distant corner of the world, but this simply shows their enormous influence and their global impact. We wish to express our deep gratitude and appreciation for the life of Sri Sundalal Bhanguna and offer our deep condolences to his family and all of you who knew him and worked with him in his great struggles. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience due to some technical no problem. No problem. But no. I think I've... Um, handle it and I can have um, your pictures on the screen now. Um, oh. Would you like to talk a little bit about them? Oh, it's okay. No, I think we should move on. <laughs> but, uh, can you see my screen and the picture? This is just the, this is one of the many uh, 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 rallies and protests that were held in cities around Australia and towns around Australia before the non or around the time of the nonviolent protest in Tasmania itself. And I think the next photo shows you some examples of that. Can you see the next photo? No, oh, we've gone back to the river. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much, Haritima. That's lovely. Thank you so much, both of you. Um, up next, I would like to um, invite another important mentor in my life, Dr. Ajay Gerola. I completed my uh, bachelor's thesis and an internship under him and learned a lot about research, um, starting from Mr. Gerola. And that's a very sad news to learn about the demise of late Sri Sundalal Bahugunaji. He was known to my family from my childhood because my mother had been her class fellow in Terry. And uh, they were together in several movements of anti liquor. So I had what I had been listening in the childhood as an activist. But when I grew as a student of engineering, and I realized that the more than an activist, he was a professional engineer who could introduce so many things, which now we realize that he had visualized almost 60, 70 years back. And I put him into the same category as we have Sir M. Viseshwaraya, as whose name or date of birth we celebrate the engineer's day. Taking his work forward, Sundalar Bahuganaji made up several points which I would call a sustainable development. 
Sir Ram Visheshwaraya was in the development and he developed the water resources because that time the south used to have a lot of famine. Fortunately, the hills of the Garhwal and Kumau, they had a lot of water. So people did not realize at that moment of time the importance of the water. But definitely for making it a sustainable development, which probably you are also doing as a subject in Melbourne, and you would realize that he has seen these things that people are going to face a lot of a shortage of water all across the country. And therefore, I would like to rate him at par with Sir M. Viseshwaraya. And as has already been said by Mr. V. K. Bahuguna, that Sundalal Bahuguna should be considered for his work for the award of the Bharat Ratna. Because I would, I would completely make him parallel to Sir M. Viseshwaraya. And all of us, we are who are the professionals. And the importance of this, I realized when I joined the Environment Protection and Pollution Control Board in Uttarakhand. Then I learned how important it is. Because it's very surprisingly that Bahuna Sahib has been, uh, has been uh, at some of the activities has been uh, rated as a non-developmental area. But that was not the case. He has never said in his life that there should not be any dam. He did mention that you should have the power generation and dams are not only for the power generation. It is a flood control device and it was a water resource project. And therefore he had never said in his life that we must not make the dams. He was of course advocating river runoff or a smaller size of dams, which I could sense it and I could realize it when I studied these projects during my stay in the Pollution Control Board and Environment Protection Board. So he was, he was in fact a very, uh, very long vision sighted person who could see a long time ahead. And in the times now to come, whether we read him or we don't read him, we would have no no alternative but to go into making the same observations which he has given about 70 years. So with these few words, I would like to pay my tribute to him and particular to you, Haritima, that you can carry forward the assignment which he has left behind. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. And it was very interesting to talk about um, the case study that you brought regarding dams. And um, often people believe that he was against dam. No. But yes, um, even I wanted to clarify this. He, even in his interviews, he used to give examples of dams, which, which are uh, in line with nature and have been um, very beneficial. The only thing that he was against was the science behind why that dam was made and how it will affect the location. Yes, I agree with you. And you must carry forward what he has left behind. Thank, Thank you, Aritma. Thank you so much, sir. Um, up next, can I have Dr. R.C. Sharma? I kindly request. Yeah, thank you, Haritma. First of all, I feel honored to be associated with this tribute meeting. I have been fortunate enough to get his continuous blessings and stimulating interaction during my stay from 1977 to 1980, almost eight years at Swamirar Tirth Campus, Old Tihri of Garbhad University. His Thakkar Baba Ashram uh, and my department of the university was so close that it was separated only by a fencing. 
I have learned so many things from him and could understand the complex functioning of the Himalayan ecosystem. He was pioneer of Chipko movement and contributed significantly for the protection of the entire Himalayas. His ideas on planting trees on hill slopes and rainwater harvesting on hilltops are globally well recognized. You can imagine most of the people, they do not plant on the hill slopes. We have traditions and traditional wisdom having khal and chal on the hilltop. So he has contributed significantly and promoting awareness that we have to plant trees on the hill slope, which are very fragile and vulnerable and prone to landslides. And we should rainwater harvesting on the hilltop so that we can retain water. His massive plantation drive has contributed tremendously in reducing carbon footprint. His philosophy of deep ecology is quite relevant today for counteracting all environmental problems, including climate change. Nowadays, we are witnessing several anthropogenic and nat natural drivers which are influencing the cybernetics of the fragile ecosystem of the Himalaya. Thus, we should put in all efforts of protecting our Himalayas and refrain from all unsustainable activities which are contributing to the degradation of the quality of air, water, and soil. Today, on this environmental day 2021, our little contribution and tribute to Honorable C. Sundalal Bahuranji, my mentor, my philosopher guide, uh, our little contribution in this regard will be a befitting tribute to the noble departed soul of Sri Bahuranji. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to part of this tribute. Thank you, Haritma. Now I would like to call Professor Suvalal Jangu share his message with us. Uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, including me in today's uh, uh, program that is for a view to Sundalal Bahuguna. I'm as uh, an assistant professor teaching political environment in my university, Mizoram Central University. Uh, I meet uh, twice a late Sri Sundalal Bhavuna during my uh, PhD years in BHU. We used to invite him as a, a speaker. And when we come to close him, we uh, felt a kind of a uh, his environment, is a kind of peace around him. He was a symbol of a symbol of peace. Uh, and the environment is a biggest uh, piece uh, as uh, considered. So Sundalal Bhavuna's environment philosophy is based on three pillars. The first is, uh, is many speakers also mentioned, the Hello. Gandhian principles. Hello. The second pillar of his uh, environmental philosophy Hello. is uh, ecological ethics. Ecological ethics is uh, a protection, preservation, and promotion of uh, natural things as uh, seeds, uh, trees, water, soil, and plants, and other kind of uh, natural species. And the third pillar of his uh, environmental philosophy as a uh, social practices. He was a kind of a player as a, a social activist or social worker in environment. He, he, he applied various yes, social yes. practices and that we need yes, now yes. Uh, yes. To, carry, to carry forward his uh, uh, carry forward his works uh, what are the social practices is a uh, involvement of the youth students uh, in the environmental activism 
nowadays we need a, the youth involvement the students involvement so sundarlal babuna he made banaras hindu university as a his scientific laboratory or as a kind of a, a scientific engineering kind of a school so he used to visit a bh to learn the scientific things on environment and he introduced that game also and that is a kind of a social practices avoid the ban on liquor that is also is a social practices a kind of a non violence satyagraha person so he visited the north east and when he marched a kind of a himalayan march from kashmir to kohima nagaland and that so i uh, his kind of a footprints in northeast hills forest and tribal people and uh, when he left now he left us uh, it means in northeast people are so lost uh, uh, their intimate friend he was a, a kind of intimate environment friend of the northeast uh, and another thing that uh, he left us uh, as we know that uh, we, how we can uh, I, and live him we can live him in kind of a carry forwarding his greater needs remain his work is still remain we have to carry forward that's so my these words they are a, as a kind of a homage to late saul uh, is sundarlal bahuguna and i am teaching environmental politics and i am working as a writing a book on environmental politics in india and definitely the words and works of sundarlal bahuguna will really uh, help me formulate a, a philosophical part of a environment in india thank you for this kind of a... can i please invite professor chandrasekhar p one of my mentors from belgaur professor chandrasekhar um, previously worked with the national university in singapore and has been a very inspirational mentor for all his students i welcome you here sir thank you aritima thank you i'm aritima thank you aritima i'm is is my work am i audible uh, aritima yes sir yes sir now you oh yeah, thank you thank you well well in india we have to ask this question often because of the network issues that's why i was asking thank you aritima thank you greetings to honorable uh, dignitaries and great professors it's great to meet you greetings to friends and family members of the great person we are remembering now i'm so grateful to be a part of this ceremony my name is chandra shekhar i am in chennai just like what she said haritima was my student the honor was indeed mine as a teacher ma chennai is in the southern part of india here right now the temperature is between uh, 35 and uh, 38 degrees celsius not just today it has been that high for the past 4 weeks sometimes it touched even 40 degrees with 95% humidity you can imagine the situation here but surprising fact is that there is no mention in uh, as far as i know in any records in old sculptures or i mean uh, scriptures uh, agamas or edikas that this place is very hot this region is very hot in the past so we can see that the proof of climate change is right in front of us if you can't go to antarctica or something i welcome you to come to chennai and do research you know as a teacher as a teacher we often ask our students very fundamental questions i used to ask my students what is environment environment most of the time i get this answer what is surrounding us is called environment then i ask so i am part of your surroundings and obviously you are part of my surroundings correct so that means am i part of your environment and vice versa you know after some deep thought students will say oh yeah yes everything is environment then then they see things 
in a slightly different perspective. It is no more a selfish bag. Now the temperature is between uh, 35 and uh, 38 degrees Celsius. Not just today. It has been that high for the past four weeks. Sometimes it touched even 40 degrees. With 95% humidity, you can imagine the situation here. But surprising fact is that there is no mention in, uh, as far as I know, in any records, in old sculptures or, I mean, uh, scriptures, uh, Agamas or Edikas, that this place is very hot, this region is very hot in the past. So we can see that the proof of climate change is right in front of us. If you can't go to Antarctica or something, I welcome you to come to Chennai and do research, you know. As a teacher, as a teacher, we often ask our students very fundamental questions. I used to ask my students, what is environment? environment? Most of the time I get this answer. What is surrounding us is called the environment. Then I ask, so I am part of your surroundings and obviously you are part of my surroundings, correct? So that means am I part of your environment and vice versa, you know? After some deep thought, students will say, oh, yeah, yes, everything is environment then. Then they see things in a slightly different perspective. It is no more a selfish barrier, you know. It's about everything. Then comes the billion-dollar question, how to protect it. Our great Bhagavanaji made it very simple, protect trees. One line, just one line, protect trees. He thought of it. He said it in words. He showed in action. Thought, words, action, all in synchronization. That is what the greatness about him was. When I see his pictures shown before here, I see some great calmness in his eyes, a great vision. I see the same thing in his family members and friends including our distinguished student Haritima. So personally, I have no fears about the future. Young generation is more aware of the problems we created and they're extremely good in understanding the solutions as well. The seed for such greatness was initiated by the great person we are honoring now. That seed of inspiration will definitely grow into a full tree of knowledge and discipline. Thank you so much, Aritima, for giving this opportunity to share my thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I think, I hope all students follow your advice and we have a green and clean future. जी आईसीएफआरई थे तो अब मैं उनसे अनुरोध करूंगा कि अपने उद्गार डॉक्टर बी के बाउना धन्यवाद प्रदीप सबसे पहले तो मैं ये कहूंगा कि आज हम एक महान विभूति की को श्रद्धांजलि अर्पित करने के लिए यहां पे आपने जो कैच सबसे पहले तो मैं आपको इसका साधुवाद देता हूं वो एक ऐसे विभूति थे अद्वितीय उनके साथ उनका अद्वितीय बुद्धि के अद्वितीय उनका तेज था और ऐसे मनीषी जो है सौ साल में कोई एक बात पैदा होता है और उत्तराखंड और टिहरी गढ़वाल और जहां जहां भी वो उनकी जो कार्यस्थली रही है आपके वो एक बहुत पुण्य के प्राप्ति हुई है उनको कि एक ऐसा मानुष यहाँ पैदा हुआ जिसने सारे विश्व को चकित करके इस तरह बुटाया कि प्रकृति को प्यार करो रिवोल्यूशनरी आइडिया थे उनकी जो वाणी थी उसमें दैविकता बड़े बड़े सॉफ्ट सॉफ्ट 
और बड़े फर्म ढंग से बात करते थे और एक अधिकारी होने के नाते मैं ये कहूंगा फॉरेस्ट ऑफिसर में रहा हूं कि उनका क्या इम्पैक्ट पड़ा है अभी तो उन्होंने बहुत सारे आंदोलन किए और उन्होंने सारे विश्व को सजग किया भारत में तो उन्हीं के कारण जो है आज मैं ये कहूंगा फॉरेस्ट कंजर्वेशन एक्ट जो इंदिरा गांधी उस समय लाई थी 1980 में वो इन्हीं के ही आंदोलनों और सरकार को झकझोर देने का जो उन्होंने कार्य किया उसके कारण आज इस देश में फॉरेस्ट कंजर्वेशन एक्ट है ये मैं अपनी तरफ से कहूंगा कि उनका सिंगुलर एक सिंगल इतना बड़ा अचीवमेंट है क्योंकि इस देश में पानी की व्यवस्था जो है वो हमारे 450 450 तीस के आसपास जो नदियां हैं जो वाटर सेड है वो बहुत सुरक्षित इसीलिए है कि हमारे पास जंगल है और अगर फॉरेस्ट कंजर्वेशन एक्ट नहीं आता तो आज हमारे देश में बहुत बुरी हालत होती तो आज मेरा कहने का कि सरकार पर उनका कितना असर पड़ा है एक ये दूसरे जितनी भी सरकारी जो पॉलिसी आप सोच समझ करके ही होती है फॉरेस्ट में कहो और इन्वायरमेंट में कहो हमारी जो मिनिस्ट्री बनी है उसमें भी उनका योगदान रहा है और वो हमारे जो मंत्री होते हैं सरकारी मंत्री बहुत सारा काम करते हैं पर अगर जनता के मंत्री अगर कोई हुए तो सुंदरलाल भोगना हुए जो जनता के मंत्री थे और जनता के मंत्री ने बहुत बड़ा काम करके इस देश में पर्यावरण के संतुलन के लिए एक जो जो उन्होंने काम किया है वो आज हम सब लोग उसको देख रहे हैं और जिस तरह से उन्होंने हिमालय के हिमालय से लेकर के जो यात्राएं की है जिस तरह से सारे विश्व में उनका हुआ है मैं समझता हूं कि आज अगर इस देश में पिछले दस साल में आने वाले दस साल में कोई आदमी अगर भारत रत्न का हथकार है तो वो है श्री सुंदरलाल जी भोगना मैं भारत सरकार से अनुरोध करूंगा माननीय मुख्यमंत्री जी अगर सुन रहे हैं उनसे अनुरोध करूंगा कि वो इस विषय में भारत सरकार को लिखे भारत रत्न दे करके भारत रत्न की उत्कृष्टि भारत रत्न को भी थोड़ा सम्मान मिलेगा अगर सुंदरलाल भोगना जी को ये दिया गया धन्यवाद बोगना जी प्रदीप बोगना जी and haritma for giving me an opportunity on this tribute occasion to late sri sundarlal bhaguna ji i am dr r k sirvastha professor and head department of environmental sciences at gb pant university of technology and at pantanagar most of you must be aware about pantanagar i have an opportunity to meet personally with the sri sundarlal bagoda ji two times and the biggest lesson which he has given to me not just in a formal way and always i keep in my mind ki fashion mein bahut competition hai बट सादगी ऐसी है कि उसमें कोई कंपटीशन नहीं है और सादगी में जो आनंद है सुकून है वो फैशन के कंपटीशन में नहीं है फैशन के कंपटीशन में केवल हमें टेंशन और दुनिया भर के बाय प्रोडक्ट निकालने हैं वी मे को रिलेटेड विद आवर क्लॉथ विथ आवर फैशन और विथ आवर डिमांड एंड विथ आवर ऑनस तो वी ऑल on behalf of pantanagar university and my department and from my student we pay our homage to sri sundarlal bhagwala ji and uh, i totally agree with uh, my earlier speaker mega patekar ji as he mentioned ki today we are not giving shraddhanjali we have to be prepared for karyanjali whatever the things vision for which he travel around 4700 km on the hilly terrain 
in the forest just to create the awareness among the people and put forward the message of the ladies, those who have started Chipko movement for protection of tree due to their need, due to their future demand. Now, why we are talking today about the climate change? My earlier speaker and uh, my friend Garyolaji, he may be, he may recognize me. And other speaker also mentioned that the need of our is certainly needed to curb the climate change issues because now we are witnessing not it is that it is written in the historical book like this temperature etc is there in last 10 years we all are noticing how temperature is increasing and some some part of the rajasthan the temperature is touching around 48 and in Churu and some area around 49 degrees centigrade. This is the happening and this is the gradually this temperature is increasing. And what are the consequences? Consequences, when more temperature, then suddenly there will be need of more air condition, more exhaust of the gases, more carbon dioxide emission by industry, by automobile, by other activities. And these all greenhouse gases are responsible for causing climate change. Only solution was that the sequestration of sequestration of the carbon dioxide, and that is a very easy and cheap method by the tree. So therefore, what is the need of tree? We have to think from this angle also, which Swargi Bahunaji visualized a long, long ago. It provides shelter, it provides food, it provides humus, it provides oxygen, it sequester carbon dioxide, it bound the soils, protect the erosion, and like this. Of course, his concern was also against the dairy, not for the hydroelectric power project. He has mentioned in one two interview also, this video is available on the YouTube. He used reservoir size hydropower project, which is made at Tehri. It may vanish Haridwar and Rishi case within an hour, within an hour, if any brush etc. can take place due to disturbance in the rocks and all these things. There are plenty of other examples also where the dam has destroyed by the earthquake and other things. So that was his concern, ki how to protect, how to take care of the hydropower projects, looking to the future consequences. So whatever the facility we are using today, that must be available for our future generation, looking through the time constraints, I would like to finish my work in very short. And his basic vision and what theory he has given, ecology is the permanent economy. So in this corona pandemic, we have realized that those who are agriculture-based farming, agriculture production, gardening, orchard, they were not much more affected as compared to the anthropogenic activities called industry and other things. This is totally locked down. Cities are locked down. Shops are locked down. Malls are locked down. And people get unemployed. But those who are dependent with the ecology, nature, at least they are growing their apple, they are growing their other fruits and they are surviving and moreover the economy is also maintained so they are maintained due to this agriculture in the agriculture sector so therefore whatever the policy we take we must consider ecology as one of the basic uh, things 
behind the any policy and as uh, earlier my earlier speaker bk bahuna ji he is a no doubt very senior i retired is officer ki due to the bahuna ji and his chipko moment this new forest policy came in 1980 government realizes and everything everyone realized that ki this is a very important issue and that time logging of tree was stopped for more than 15 years and we can imagine ki how much carbon dioxide we sequestered that time how much oxygen we have produced this all table is there ki one tree how much it produce oxygen and how much it consume the carbon dioxide and all these things so we have to take care of the climate change so that whatever the facility we are using we must provide in sustainable way to the our future generation and that's all looking to the time constraints i would like to stop here and again my uh, pay my homage to late sri sundarlal bahuguna ji and request all of you and all teacher all social workers to kindly propagate his message transfer his message from top to the grassroots level so that whatever he wanted that can be achieved and his work should not sacrifice thank you very much thank you so much sir with this we come to an end of our second session my grandfather raised concerns over climate change decades ago Today we all experience climate extremes more than ever before. We do not have much time left. If we do not take actions now, our future generations will never be able to experience the bliss of nature that we had the opportunity to live in and learn from. Climate extremes will become more frequent, forcing people to migrate, destroying livelihood opportunities for many. Sadly, as indicated by the IPCC, highly vulnerable and socially disadvantaged communities will be the most vulnerable vulnerable to this impact. Thank you. I would like to thank everyone for sharing such uh, important information with us and your memories. Now, um, I would like to move on to the third section. of our session today which is messages from the community community being the most important and integral part of a society um haritima if uh, is it possible that uh, two persons are waiting professor uh, ps negi and uh, professor sp singh uh, if it is possible uh, then get, get them to chance otherwise uh, carry on yes definitely um can we have professor sp singh and then professor s pinegi so is i think um i am confusing with the name zoom name here yeah yeah uh, dr ps negi is present uh, dr ps negi dr ps negi is there yes please should i start yes sir. thank you sir should i start yes sir uh, good evening uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, especially uh, environment, environmentalists and naturalists from uh, different part of world including india i am dr ps negi from foot hills of himalaya from dehradun and uh, i would like to tell you i met uh, late sri bahuna ji long back in 1979 when i was the bsc student और मैं उनसे मिला और उनसे पूछा उस टाइम वो डैम के अगेंस्ट में प्रोटेस्ट कर रहे थे और आम जनभावना भी यही है कि वो शायद डैम के अगेंस्ट थे लेकिन उनसे मिलके मुझे लगा वो डैम के अगेंस्ट नहीं है वो छोटे छोटे डैम के बनाना चाह बनवाना चाहते हैं और बड़े बड़े बांध बनने से विशेषकर जो बहुत बड़ी माइग्रेशन की स्थिति उत्पन्न होती है वो दर्द उनके दिल में था और आदमी को रेबरेटेड तो की जरूर किया जाता है लेकिन उनकी खेती बाड़ी उनका हैबिटेट जो है वो पूरा डिसलोकेट हो जाता है तो वो वो दर्द उनके दिल में था और मैं समझता हूँ कि भोगना जी एक सबसे बड़ी बात ये थी कि हालांकि रास्ते स्तर के उन्हें पदयात्राएं की लेकिन अपने आंदोलन के लिए अपने आंदोलन को 
विश्व विख्यात करने के लिए राष्ट्रीय स्तर पर लाने के लिए उन्होंने सिर्फ टिहरी जिले को ही चुना और अपने जन्म स्थली को चुना एक भावी पीढ़ी को एक संदेश उन्होंने दिया अगर आप वास्तविक कार्य कर रहे हैं जन उपयोगी कार्य कर रहे हैं तो कहीं पे विश्व के किसी कोने पे हिंदुस्तान के किसी कोने पे आप अपना प्रयास करिए और जरूर आपके कार्यों को दुनिया सराएगी और श्री बहुगुना जी ने आंचलिक स्तर पर नहीं राष्ट्रीय स्तर पे अंतरराष्ट्रीय स्तर पे वो ख्याति अर्जित की और उन्होंने हमेशा आम आदमी की बात की एक वैज्ञानिक होने के नाते अब मैं सोचता हूँ उस टाइम तो सेवेंटी नाइन में मैं बी का छात्र था अब मैं सोचता हूँ जो मूलभूत बातें उन्होंने कही मिट्टी पानी और बयान और ये तीनों चीजें सोयल वाटर एंड फ्रेश एयर ये तीनों चीजें जंगलों से रिलेटेड है और इंसान की मूलभूत आवश्यकताएं भी हैं वो बात उन्होंने तब कही दी और वो बातें हमारी वेदों में भी है उन्होंने वेदों का भी अच्छा अध्ययन किया था प्रकृति का अध्ययन किया और मैं उनको अपना श्रद्धा सुमन अर्पित करता हूँ और मैं समझता हूँ कि पूरी प्रकृति विद जो है नेचुरलिस्ट जो है उनकी सबसे बड़ी जिम्मेदारी यही होगी कि भगुना जी की जो फिलोसफी थी मिट्टी पानी और बयार ये है जीवन के आधार जो फंडामेंटल रिक्वायरमेंट है इंसान की उस चीज को हम कैसे संरक्षित करें प्रकृति में और सतत विकास भी हो आदमी का तो दोनों चीज लेके हमें चलना पड़ेगा सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट भी जरूरी है और प्रकृति का कंजर्वेशन भी जरूरी है प्रकृति का दोहन हम इस स्तर पे करें कि प्रकृति आप अपने आप में स्टेबलाइज ना हो जाए इन शब्दों के साथ मैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अदा करता हूँ ऑर्गेनाइजर्स का मुझे मौका दिया इस वंडरफुल इवेंट में हिस्सा बनने का सो ग्रेट ऑफ यू थैंक यू वेरी मच my friend and younger son of late sri sundarlal bahuguna pradeep for inviting me to this memorial meeting but uh, because of earlier commitments i am not able to directly participate in this program organized by pradeep and hence at his request i am sending this video on climate change and the himalaya the topic is very closely associated with bhoguna ji's ideas of a stable environment but climate change rather i would say global warming is affecting the himalaya uh, in a much more brutal way while people resident in the himalaya have done very little to cause the global warming the global warming is leading to the melting of the ice stock and snow melts rapidly go down changing the hydrographic character of himalayan rivers that in turn affect seriously the irrigation and food security of the large plains in asia including in populated countries like uh, china india bangladesh the uh, pakistan and is of a serious nature because Himalayan warming is about 3 to 4 times that of the warming of the average plains of the world. Now, the warming leads also to climate change and climate change causes the food insecurity and other economic difficulties within the Himalaya. So on the whole, addressing climate change if we take a resolve and make our governments Uh, rather push our governments to agree to a common aim of reducing global warming it will be a 
very, very important tribute to Bhavagana Ji. I end my presentation here with again saluting the courageous and very, very strong social activist Bhavagana Ji and give him my ultimate pranam. Thank you.